Welcome to another episode of Code Review, where in each video I take a look at a well-known or not so well-known bad practice and try to understand why it's something we consider to avoid and try to write better code. What's up, I'm Ijema. I'm a software engineer who is super interested in the world of JavaScript and all the opinions that come from it. Before we jump into this video, I have a quick disclaimer. The bad practice we'll be reviewing today is using the increment and decrement operators. If you're not too familiar with these operators, I've got you covered. The increment operator is the double plus signs, while the decrement operator is the double minus signs, and they allow you to either increase or decrease a value in JavaScript. With this code block example, we can see here that I create a new variable called year with the value of 2020. And then after that, I create two new functions, jump forward and jump backward, where both functions use either the increment or decrement operator. When I call jump forward, the value of year gets increased to 2021. And when I call jump backward after that, the value decreases back down to 2020. This is a great example to show how the increment and decrement operators work, but you'll most likely see these operators used when you're trying to loop over something, more specifically when you're using a for loop or a while loop. Here you can see that I'm using the increment operator to tell my for loop that I want to increase the current index of my genres array. And then for each genre, I'll print it out. We can see something similar happening with the use of the decrement operator with a while loop. In this code block, you can see that I'm taking advantage of the decrement operator to step through my genres array backwards while using a while loop. What's happening in both cases is that I'm altering the actual value of my i and index variables in place respectively. And the interesting thing about the increment and decrement operators is that they don't have to just be appended to a variable. You have the option of either appending it or prepending it to a variable. And these two options are referred to as the postfix and the prefix. But what do I mean exactly by postfix and prefix? When you append these operators after a value or perform a post increment or decrement, the value that comes from that line will be the same original value of the variable before it gets incremented or decremented. Whereas when you prepend these operators or perform a pre-increment or decrement, the final return value will be the newly incremented or decremented value. Let's walk through a couple of examples. Here we can see that I have the variable age assigned to the value of 50. After that, I create a new variable called new age, which is assigned to the age variable with the increment operator appended to it. As you can see in the comments, the value that's actually assigned to new age is 50 instead of the maybe expected 51. This happens because with the operators as a postfix or post incrementing, the variable's value doesn't change until the very next line. That's why when we print out age at the end, it now has the expected value of 51. This also happens when we apply the decrement operator after a value. Again, we can see that new age is still assigned to 50, while age will decrease to 49 after the decrement operator has been fully applied. This might not feel the most natural, especially if you're expecting your value to be incremented or decremented before it gets assigned to another variable. So this issue is addressed with the process of prepending or prefixing these operators. So now in this code block, I'm prepending my increment operator. This is going to change the value of age before it gets assigned to new age. So new age is going to have the incremented value of 51. Again, you can see the same behavior for the decrement operator, where I have my decrement operator prepended to age, so new age has the value of 49. So through these examples, you can see that you have control of when you can either increment or decrement your variables. So by now you might be wondering, okay, what's the problem exactly? I like the freedom and flexibility that these operators give me in terms of controlling the values of my variables. And I do agree with the idea that these operators can provide a greater sense of flexibility, but I think that flexibility could lead to possible problems or unexpected behaviors in your applications. More specifically, some of the concerns that I've seen have been a general discouragement of readability and a concern with the automatic semicolon insertion. So first up is discouraging readability. The fact that you can either append or prepend these operators, again, flexible, but in just my opinion, pretty confusing by the end of the day. I feel like the choice of prepending and appending introduces the possibility of developers performing more mental gymnastics, where they have to keep track of variables that haven't been changed yet or have been changed. 
So in this co-block example, I have the variable A with the value of 10. And then right below that, I'm creating value B, where you can see here that we're pre-incrementing the value A, then adding that value to us post-incrementing the value A, and then adding that value to another post-incrementing of the value of A. To some, this might not seem so crazy or scary, but to me, when I read through this code, I don't know what is happening right off the bat. When I'm watching A get pre-incremented or post-incremented, it's really difficult for me to keep track of what its current value is. When I wrote this line of code and tried to debug it to figure out the final value, I had to take out a notebook to keep track of the intermediate values of A. So you can see here that the final value of A is 13 because ultimately we incremented three times, and you can see here with B that its final value is 34. And one of those unexpected behaviors can actually come from JavaScript's automatic semicolon insertion. JavaScript undergoes automatic semicolon insertion, which is the process of inserting semicolons into files that don't explicitly use them. For the most part, this is a convenience to developers who don't want to be tasked with inserting their own semicolons, but this luxury comes with a cost. JavaScript isn't perfect when it comes to determining the right spots for inserting semicolons. So with the following code blocks, you can see how JavaScript doesn't know when to insert semicolon in the right spot, which could lead to some unexpected final values. This code block comes from the ESLint page that describes the no plus plus rule, which treats the use of the increment and decrement operators as an error. Here we can see that I have my two variables, i and j, which are getting assigned the values 10 and 20 respectively. After creating these variables, I'm appending my increment operator to i, but I'm introducing a space between them, which is okay for now since JavaScript doesn't consider the space between these two things as a syntax error. But let's say that I accidentally press the enter key between my i variable and the increment operator. So now we have three separate lines where we have i, the increment operator, and j. How JavaScript is going to interpret these three lines is actually interesting, but unfortunately unexpected. Since there's no semicolon to declaratively tell JavaScript that the line has ended, JavaScript is going to assume that we're trying to prepend our increment operator to j, thus incrementing j's value from 20 to 21 and leaving i at 10. This and similar tiny unexpected hiccups feel minuscule and probably super unlikely to happen in the grand scheme of things. And that might be true if you're working on your own project where you're the only contributor, but the second your application grows in size, it becomes a lot more complex and you have multiple developers working on it, the chances of things like this happening increases significantly. Inside super large code bases, tiny things like these can easily fall through the cracks. So we've been looking at possible problems that come from using these operators, but now we have to answer the question of what is a possible solution? The most direct alternative to the increment and decrement operators is the addition and subtraction assignment operators. The way that these operators work is that on the left hand side you have a variable, and on the right hand side you have a value that you want to either add or subtract from that left hand variable. So in this code block, again, we have our age variable. Right after that, instead of using the increment operator, I'm using the addition assignment operator. All this line is doing is adding the value 1 to our variable, which will now be 51. Another great thing about using the assignment operators is that they're just so much more expressive when compared to the increment and decrement operators. This is because you can clearly specify what value you want to either add or subtract to your original variable. So here we have a code block where I'm using both our add and subtract assignment variables. One important thing to note is that you can use this assignment operator with data types that can be coerced into a common data type. So with this first example here, you can see that I'm adding the value of 1 to age, which is going to give us 51. And then right below that, I'm subtracting the value of true, which can get coerced into a number data type. So I'm subtracting the value 1, giving us 50. But it's important to note that strings act very differently. So here I'm trying to add the value of our string 11. And instead of getting 61, for example, as a number, we're gonna get the string with the numbers 50 and 11 appended together. So we can see through this example, we can get a better sense of what is getting added or subtracted to our left-hand side variable because the right-hand side is a lot more clear in terms of what value it's containing. One important thing to note about these assignment operators is that on the left-hand side, there must be a variable that can take on the new right-hand values assignment. So you can't have standalone values on the left-hand side. So as I mentioned before, the addition and subtraction assignment variables are a direct alternative to the increment and decrement operators, but there are other ways that you can completely avoid these two different types of operators. 
The alternative to the increment decrement operators and the addition and subtraction operators that you would want to use in your current situation depends on your current situation. Let's say that you're dealing with an array. Instead of using a regular for or while loop, you could use the built-in methods like map for each and reduce. We can see how this works. So here I have my people array with Danny Glover, Eddie Murphy, and Samuel L. Jackson, and I have my total count set to zero. I'm using a for loop to increment my total count by one each time I step through an element. You can also notice here that I'm using the addition assignment operator to increment the value of i and my total count is gonna be equal to three. But let's say instead of using a for loop to iterate through my array, I could take advantage of the built-in array method, reduce. So again, I have the same people array, but instead of using a for loop, I'm using my people reduce method call. Right below people, I'm creating a new total count variable that's getting assigned to the return value from calling people reduce. The callback inside of my reduce method is going to take total count which is the current total count of my array. And inside this callback method, I'm incrementing its value by one and returning that current total count. I know I could have used the array's length property, but I want to show you that you can use built-in array methods as an alternative to using assignment operators. The increment and decrement operators are concise and succinct operators that provide a lot of flexibility of when exactly you want to increment or decrement a variable's value. But I think that flexibility can introduce a lot of concerns as we saw in this video. And the great thing about the addition and subtraction assignment operators is that a lot of those concerns are addressed. With the assignment operators, we no longer have to worry about the automatic semicolon insertion concern. And on top of that, the assignment operators encourage a better sense of readability and expressibility in your code. That's it for another episode of Code Review. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more JavaScript content. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about JavaScript and a variety of topics. You can feel free to send me a DM so we can have a chat. And with that, I will see you on the next Code Review.